Hi everybody. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Pounds and Inches, a board game review series where we bring you a review as soon as one of us loses a pound or an inch. That's right. Down another pound. And because we number our episodes based off of our current pounds and inches, this is episode 409 and 157. And forever 157. Today we are talking about Ticket to Ride. All right, so this is kind of that modern classic it's come to become, uh, and uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, so what do you get when you open the box? So you get the player map that everybody's playing on. This is a third of it. Ryan's going to open it up just a little. Um, so you get the player map. Uh, you get these train car cards. They're all different colors, and you'll figure out why that's important soon. And there's a wild and all sorts of stuff, all of these. And then you also get the train route cards, like this. And then the player, um, the player pieces, which are all just these little tiny trains that you can play on the board. So there's five different colors because you can play up to five players. Um, so how does the game play? All right, so it's kind of a route connection game. You're building these routes. Uh, you're fulfilling those those routes that were on these cards. So it might say, uh, go from Vancouver to Los Angeles. So you need to create the, you know, the most optimal, optimal route to connect those two spots. Um, so there's a little bit of uh, the route connection there. It's also, I guess we can call it area control in a way, uh, because uh, once someone goes in a route, it's gone from everybody else. For instance, if I wanted to go from Portland to Salt Lake City, once I take that route, no one else can go there. There are some spots on the board that have two routes on them, like that. So in a two and a three player game, once one person fulfills that spot on the board, the opposite side can no longer be filled, and it's kind of taken over. However, in a four and a five player game, um, the other spot is open, so then both people, you know, two people can go side by side. All right, so now it's actually driving that mechanism, what's actually allowing you to place these cards, or to place these trains, are the colored cards. These are the train cards. All right, so for instance, again, going from Portland to Salt Lake City, it's six trains long. You would need to co collect six of the blue train cards to play down a new turn and that would allow you to block that spot off, that would become yours, that your route. Um, so you have the set collection, you have the route building, you have a little bit of blocking going on. Um, as far as the points go, when you place a route down, the longer the route goes, the more points it's worth. A little one spot like this is only worth one point. That long six one is worth 15 points, so it kind of gets exponentially bigger. And also the, the destination cards as well, the longer they are, the more points they're worth as well. So you're trying to complete as many of those as possible, uh, play as many trains as possible, and at the end of the game, whoever has managed to make the longest unbroken train of trains uh, gets an extra 10 point bonus. So it adds a little, a little extra to it as well. Yeah, the great thing about this game that I think many people have noticed and will agree with is there's basically no barrier to entry. Yeah, this is a game that will appeal to, to just about everybody. Uh, it's been called a lot of times a gateway game, which I'm not sure I love that terminology because it kind of sounds, I don't know, snooty almost, like a, a real gamer wouldn't play this game or something like that. Um, but I would call us real gamers and, and we play it, so there's, there must be something to it. Um, but yeah, this is uh, wide open to anybody who, uh, who wants to play it. Yeah, we played it in our game group, we played it with friends and with family, and it, it just it just works. Yeah, it breaks all age barriers, uh, experience barriers, all that kind of stuff. You can kind of play at the level you want to play it at. If you want to be super aggressive, you can be. Uh, and try to block as many people as possible. If you want to go for you know some of the long, big point routes, you can do that. If you want to go for a, few, like, you know, a whole bunch of the really short routes that are worth just a few points, mm -hmm. You can do that and they're all viable options yeah there's i mean there's only three actions you can take throughout the entire game and that's it and so it just makes it really simple to learn and teach yeah you're either going to be drawing the the colored train cards um you're going to be placing a route down you know blocking off one of these areas or you're going to be drawing more of the destination cards and that's really your only three options as far as what you can do on a turn now, you know, what trains you take, what routes you build, all that stuff kind of adds to the, the game as well. But as far as the rule set itself, very few rules, very easy to learn, very easy to teach. Yeah. So what's something that you're not very fond of about this game, or that somebody may not be fond of that we should take note of? All right, so uh, in the three-player game and the five-player game, it can get a little bit crowded on the map. Um, not everyone's going to get everything they need. Um, and on those destination cards, if you don't complete it, you know, going from point A to point B, 
uh, you actually get those negative those points that are on the card as a negative point total. So it's really important to complete those, but not everyone's going to be able to complete them when it's that crowded. Um, you might overextend yourself a little bit. You might have to go out and around because someone already used the route that you wanted to use. Um, so if that's kind of something that might frustrate you, this might be a game to avoid, or it might be something you wanted to play only at the two-player count, the four-player count, where things are a little bit more opened up to you. Yeah, and sometimes it can be frustrating where you're trying to draw a certain um, a train car and it's just not happening. If you're wanting this route right here, this is taken, and this is taken, and that's taken, and you really need blue train car cards and they're just not showing up, that can be frustrating. Um, I don't see it happen a lot, but it does happen. Um, spoiler alert, they do address that and some of the expansions, so we'll talk about that in a future episode. Yeah, but this is a game that uh, um, MSRP is for $50, and I think that's a pretty fair price. Um, what you're really doing is if this is a game that sounds interesting to you, but you get to a point where you want more and you want to see more options, you're also investing in you know the train cars and the train cars themselves uh, because you're going to be using those in expansions as well if you feel like going to the next step. Um, so you're going to need those for the expansions, and but even for $50 for the base game itself, you're still going to get a lot of play out of it. Yeah. So I would definitely recommend this to basically anybody. Um, I haven't played with anybody who has said anything negative about this game. I'm sure there's people out there, but amongst our larger group of people that we've played with, I haven't heard anything bad. What I found is the, the appeal is very broad and people like it. Um, so uh, we recommend it. Give it a shot. If you haven't played Ticket to Ride yet, uh, this is one that we recommend. It's fun at the two-player count. It's fun at all player counts, but uh, um, we, we play a lot it's just our, ourselves or you know, with the bigger groups also. Um, so thanks again for tuning in. This has been Pounds and Inches. Uh, you can find us on our YouTube channel, Pounds and Inches, or you can find all of our reviews in one place. We also have a blog on BoardGameGeek.com, also called Pounds and Inches, where we talk a little bit more about the health side of what we're doing and our uh, struggles and triumphs as we uh, get closer to our health goals. All right, so uh, feel free to leave me feedback. Yeah, um, until next time. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Bye. Bye.